sure we. Uh, I, I was not aware of one. Oh, there was one. My, Miles, I mean, Mike uh, formed it, remember? And I, don't, I, think it, I don't remember. He was, remember that? He came to us asking for ideas. And, I, don't think I think there was like an informal it. thing. Okay. There was something, you know. Never go. The long and short of it is right, and it certainly doesn't exist now. Hey, Glenn. Hey there. <laughs> 7 o'clock. October meeting of the Balanced Route Planning Board. Um, as most of you probably know, I had to resign as the chair of this committee um, because I was recently appointed to the select board. So the first order of business tonight is to elect uh, officers on this board. Um, Sorry, I'm turning this off. That's okay. Um, okay. I'd like to nominate John Hinsley <laughs> before let's. Have a discussion. Right. Well, we have to put them on the phone. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll nominate second, have a discussion. All right. Um, is, is there a second? I would second that. Okay. So let's open it up for um, debate. Are there any other nominations? I don't think it's more than one. Awesome, thank you. Are you, are you open to this position? <laughs> hey, please. I told myself I, I, not, not to be. Um, <laughs> um, so I can share with you that my experience being chair. It's it's not that much work. Okay. And, and, and that pulling together the, the agenda, um, Sarah is very easy to to work with. Um, there, there there is a lot of signing of things and coordinating that, um, but and, and running the meeting, keeping order. Okay. Um, I know Kevin has before said he's not interested. I think I know Kevin is much more uh, uh, experienced than me. Uh, let me just throw this out there. Caroline, what about you? You've got an incredible enthusiasm for this. And I'm not saying I don't, but I mean, you've impressed me right off the bat at how enthusiastic you are about this. <laughs> and it's an eternal part of the town. You know, a lot of the politics happening within town itself. Okay, so 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 let me address that. It's it's not that I'm necessarily in an, in an objective, abstract way opposed to that, except to say, um, if well, I'm I'm really not looking for any more outside duties. But but aside from that, because nobody is right, um, there is a potential. It is being evaluated, and it could perhaps come to be that the board changes my title. And if the select board makes me a town administrator, which may or may not happen, I'm not sure if if that is even a conflict. I, I don't know that it is, but but it would be a perceived. You, you could see that being a gray area. It it, it's, it would not be a gray area. Well, I, I don't know that it would, but I just feel as though that's a bit of an impropriety, even if it's not officially. That being said, that, that that's not today. That hasn't happened. That, that hasn't happened. happened. <laughs> But, you know, I think there's a little bit to be said about stability on a board and not having a lot of change. I'd be willing to strike a grand bargain, which is you become the chairman if, in fact, you get hired as the town administrator. I would assume the chairman of the town. Seems like a very fair offer. <laughs> <laughs> Miles said one of the things that is that takes some time is signing stuff. We don't, we can go back to saying yeah you can be prepared bring the mind line to a planning board meeting and sign with that you know we're we're just start trying to if you don't want to if, if, if whoever is chairman or bring it to the following planning board right, right. right. I don't want to I mean you, it would be different with you because you're here but John would be it, would, it might be a struggle you work I would assume I don't know where your office is well I'm working Dover and I'm and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an attorney yeah. I have a part-time staff person, my daughter, who I pay her pittance, uh, but that was the agreement that basically we, we struck, because um, I wasn't looking for someone. Uh, 
and I don't want to go into too much detail, but I am basically the entire, I mean, I am the administration, I'm the, I'm the, uh, kid, you know, I'm the, uh, what's the word for the uh, production line, you know, the factory line, right. I'm sales, I'm billing, and uh, as you can see, I, I tend to get here just before seven. I, I'm just concerned that I don't have the time, even for the additional stuff, and, I, and I'm being honest about that. Yeah. If, if I had, um, you know, if I was in a different job where I wasn't 95% 90, of what my what I earn comes from my direct efforts, I think I would feel differently. But may I inquire as to Kevin's reluctance? It's just it's a case of the time as well. I don't think I can do position justice. Okay, so what if you were offered some kind of assistance with that? Because as Miles says, Sarah, you know, can help, and Sarah's good that way. And, and, and there could be other outside assistance in prepping agendas or whatever else you need. I still don't think I could do justice. Justice? I don't think it would be fair to the town. Oh, could you define that? I'm so uh, sorry, but... <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't mean to be... Okay, that's fair. I mean, that, that, that's honest at least. I just... You don't want to or you don't want, you don't want to define it or you don't want to be the chair? I, I know that friend to Kevin that but when, when Pat was going to leave, leave the whole world, he, had the said, he had said before... Uh, to Pat, and I know he's got some personal reasons, but I don't know what the personal reasons are, but I'm really saying Pat, I have personal reasons why I don't want to be the chairman, and so I know he's had a long standing, yeah. that's why I brought that up, I knew he didn't want to be the yep. chairman. Yep. You know why he didn't become the chairman, he would have been a natural successor, no, it's not his mile. No, uh, I, I uh, when, when Pat, when Pat had, had left. I just say that for exactly those reasons, because you've been here for a long time, and you know stuff, and you are... Well, first. But yeah, I mean, it, it is tough to, to be here the times that I have. I, I, I make it a priority, and, and just as you do, to, to be here for my meetings. And um, beyond that, there's very little free time. Okay, so then, um, okay, so so I'll take John's offer. On the on the condition, and I don't even know if I can even like really put this condition out there. But can we? I think we all need to work on some. We need some fresh blood. We need some recruiting. Um, we've got two professional planners at least that work for other municipalities living in Rollinsford, and I can't get them to show up. Um, but and, and they would be invaluable here. Um, in lieu of that, we still have an alternate position open. And I think we need more, you know, you now, now you can't, now you're not qualified. So, you know, if, if, I, if I become not really qualified, I, will say that you know. Pat, I do think Pat made an effort during a couple of our, our more contentious um, applications when, when these seats were full. <laughs> Pat did make, reach out to people. I don't remember who. But there's the one woman that lives downtown. She uh, often comes, and he asked her to come. And the hope, Celia. 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 Yeah. And there was a couple other people that you remember. In, in there was a couple people that spoke up at meetings, and then it never went anywhere. Yeah, it never went anywhere. It's, anywhere. it's just really, it's, it's, you know, um, it's an essential function, and the idea that it's staffed by whatever warm body we can find is really um, appalling and a bit of a liability. And so, I don't know what to say about that because you have to be a resident and we have a limited pull, pull from. I'm just putting it out there that I'm concerned about it because when you've got a five member board and then two people can potentially not ever step in his chair. It's been, a, it's been, this has been an issue for, yes. That's why we adjusted it to only being three because there was meetings. We, yeah, we, we come from seven to five because we, we couldn't, you know, we just couldn't. Now, I don't know how much we get out of the information, but, I mean, with the election coming up, what's to say you can't put something out in the hallway sure. that says planning board, you know, openings, and everybody that doesn't get their email or, you know, come to the meetings for their own purposes. I mean, that's one place they're going to be gathering. So There are also a lot of laws about what you can display or can't display, yeah. and so... But I think that would that would be related a, only to the town, place. not to the election. Um, the election's not even going to be here. To that point, it's going to be at the, oh, the that's right. Yeah. But still, you could you could ask for volunteers. I, I, you know, 
I think, and, and, and you know, I think we've put notices out before years past. Yeah, and there's one currently out that's okay. like a week. But I think more, it, what it, it, what was more effective is to say, hey, someone's really good. I'm going to go see it because it doesn't seem like right. we're all busy. But everybody is, you know, in every town across New Hampshire. So it's not unique to Rollinsford. Um, I, I think, and people see that that advertisement, and they just yeah throw it away. But if you call and say, hey, we really need some help, can you come back or can you? That sense of community service just isn't there anymore you know, most, most people. The desire to want to contribute, it's, it's just, well, you it just doesn't I mean, seem you there. I know you can try to create it. I mean, I, you know, you, you've never, I don't think you've ever had a problem finding a good selectmen. I, the zoning board has been full for years, haven't they? So it's, it's this board that struggles, you know. And it was town meeting where Kevin and I that's how got we involved. That's how we got involved, because we were a town meeting. You know, the other guy that was a group all right. Right. I should have say this, but what, what was his name? John. He, he's now gone. Dave uh, Island. Uh, Dave uh, was yeah. a thorn on our side for years, and then he became <laughs> a pretty good board yeah, member. Yeah, yeah. He was good. Um, and it's, 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 it's unfortunate that we lost Dave. Um, I don't know if there's another Dave Nyland out there, but he did it. He was he did his homework. So two doors up for me is uh, Nancy Carmer. I don't know. If yep, she's great. She used to serve on the board. Yeah. She used to serve on the board. So I'm not gonna take another pass at her. Um, I, I approached her last year when we first moved in. And she was like, nah, nah, nah. Too, the meetings are too long. I'm like, they're, really, they're, they're not. I, I don't think. I mean, they four were. Hours. They used to be. Like, yeah, they, they, they have been. Yeah. It's just once a month. Mike, it's like, just once a month. They're long. Yeah. Um, and we can remedy some of those problems, too. You know, if, if people feel like the meetings, I don't think the meetings have been long for years because we haven't had heavy agendas. But if it got to the point where we were meeting until 10 o'clock, we, you could, the chairman could say, we're, no, we're not taking any new business after 9.30, and yep. you'd be home by 9.45, or whatever it is. I don't think that's a, that hasn't been a concern for a couple of years. No, no Pat basically was like, the meeting's done by 9, get out of here at 9. Yeah. When I started, that was the... Right, you controlled so. the agenda, what items were placed on the agenda, and he had, could anticipate what the time frame would be for each But that's not been an issue, so I, I don't... I think that's that's pretty much going on. That's a, that's a lame excuse. Uh, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I, it's not like because I've seen old, old notes that meetings went to like eleven. That, that's that's a little late. I mean, wow. There's there's a lot to get done, but you know, you gotta be realistic with the audience. So where are we at? There doesn't seem to be an alternative, so okay. I guess that's the way it is. And I, don't, I don't think there's a problem if you, if you became town administrator. I don't, think, I don't think there's a problem. There may not be a legal one. I think there's definitely it could be, a perception, it could be a perception problem. Yeah. Problem. But, but we can address that better when we get to it. Yeah. Hypothetically, if that was to develop for Carolina, what sort of time frame would we be talking about an offer being extended, if it's even heard, but just hypothetically? Well, the, the, the deliberative session is in January, the election. So February 2nd, deliberative session. I'm sorry, yeah. That's okay. Um, and then... But the budget has to be in order and presented to the public in January. So, you know, they're, they're working on their budget. They also have to review this year's budget, you know. So, who knows? So it seems there are three people, yeah. you know. January, February, March-ish. Yeah, if, hypothetically, yeah. I mean, everything's all completely out and open. I just want to be upfront about that. Sure. Would this be another suggestion that each, each, all three, everybody in this room, me, excepting me, come up with three names and just write a little card out? Hey, you know, we mm -hmm. really, it was just something personal or maybe a phone call, you know, that, that people might not ignore? I try, I ask people at the library all the time. Mm -hmm. I approach people. I mean, I, I know people have been in town 20 years and just. And I've approached a couple of my neighbors too, and I, they, they, I mean, I think this, you're right, the lack of, and all towns have it, but everyone is so involved in their own worlds and demands of their life, it's really tough to get. To so, John, what is your perception about Rollins? I'm sorry, I didn't mean, no, to, I mean to interrupt you. Um, Rollinsford, as opposed to other, I, I, I imagine we're not the only small town that has this problem. Um. I think it was. I don't know if I was talking to you on the telephone or I was talking. I was talking to somebody recently about what I my perception of Rollinsford. I think the biggest thing that 
I see is that there's just not a ton going on here. And I don't, I, 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 I would venture a guess, to, it, I, I would suspect that people would say they don't, they're not going to make a difference being in the planning board. Hmm. Uh, whereas you go to Dover or Summersworth, every night there's, you know, twice a month or once a month, whenever they're meeting, there's probably five or six applications, you're making decisions, there's a real impact here, we might go two or three months without, a, without an application. Um, Which could change at any time. And, 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 but but I, and I also think that's also, that also means we have time to do other stuff that other towns don't have time for. So, um, but, but as I said, you know, as, a, as, the, as, as it should, Pat, Pat used to, Pat was not afraid to say, we're not meeting in July. I, you know, we don't have much going on. Can we do that? Sure. If you don't have an application, I think yeah. I statute you used to this. I think I statute if you don't have, if, if you don't have, yeah, a, if you, you can't you know, raise a corner. do it all the time. Yeah. And if you don't have any applications, I, I would, you know, I'm just saying that there's ways, you know, to try to entice people early, you know, early, early you know, early into the meeting. Uh, but I, I suspect that that may be what it is that they just don't feel like they're doing much. I don't know. Th there's um, also a huge learning curve. Um, I think people are intimidated. Um, the demographics too. We've got, too. We've got yeah. you know between young people who have a vested interest in town that's maybe looking at doing things within town um, versus people that are in the the latter ages of the more stepping back part of their lives and um, not to say retiring but just people that are kind of done with the whole being busy in life phase. You know, you need, you need more people that are you know have plans of doing things within town or you know like to see the progress of the town. Because it pertains to them and some things that but, they might but, have. But I will tell you that most, I, I, I would suspect that if you went through the, the run of Seacoast, most planning boards are made up of people with gray hair. You know, there's some young people, but by and large, people are older. So, you know, Rossford is certainly an older town than most, but actually right. by a lot. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, there's a lot of retirees because they have time. That, that, that they're not working, they're willing to give some time. So, I, you know, that, that, I, I don't know if we're not tapping into them. I don't know what, I, I guess I don't know. I don't know what's different between, you know. We do have a newsletter on. going out um, <clears throat> shortly, next month or so. We can put a little blurb in there. Well. I just think if you, if you, if everybody can approach a few people and yep. try that, you know. Yep. I mean, like, and we've had some, like, Judy was a fun, I think she was a fun, yes. now, mm -hmm. a board member, and it was a real bummer when she got done, you know. Um, we've had some pretty good ones that we've lost in the last few years. And Pat was, you know, I know Pat wasn't everybody's favorite, but he, he worked hard. And he did, you know, he really tried, I think. Um, so I don't know. So why don't we get a, 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 a nomination on the floor? I don't know if you need to withdraw your nomination. I'll withdraw. Okay. And I'll make Carolyn. I'll second that number. Um, so for voting purposes, I'll, I'll appoint Glenn also to be a voting member. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 I'll oppose. Congratulations. Congratulations. Don't help us all. Sure, me. <laughs> you want to take over the head the chair? No, I'll let you stay there. I can get rid of this chair. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> Mike likes that chair. I know. It's a good breaker. Yes, it is. Um, so, can we just do a vice chair? Uh, actually, let's do a vice yeah, chair. Should, if no, we I think you I'm currently vice happy chair. to continue to be vice chair. So, but if someone else wants it, I'm happy to have someone else take it. John is, we should just leave it well enough alone. Well, 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 right? Since we have. Yeah. yeah, I don't think. I, don't know I was thinking, thinking we, I don't know if we need to do it either, but if we need to do it, it's formality fine, if not, it's fine. No, I think it's still part of your turn. You still yeah. need to turn. Okay. All right, so be it. Um, I did not print the agenda. Okay. But I believe we have an application. If you want to step over to the table, we'll hear you. And let you get out of here while we yeah. go on and on. Oh, we have an application here for the <laughs> He happens to be a How about that? Hey, Caroline, just so you know, I'm going to um, <coughs> recuse myself from participating in this sure. because I uh, was the uh, acting chair of the CBA yep. when we had Mr. Um, Genesis case, so I won't be participating in any discussion about it. And I'm also recusing myself as a lawyer. Okay. 
very good, thank you. So we've got Glenn, Kevin, and myself voting on this one. Good evening. My, my name is Philip Jennison. I live on 125 Bay Road. Uh, I built my lot in 1985, built my house up there. We've lived there ever since. Um, probably in 1982, Ruth and uh, George Marston bought this back lot, and they've, uh, George has passed since, but Ruth has paid taxes on it as a house lot ever since. Last uh, summer, she called me up wanted me to buy that lot from her. Um, over the years, people have tried to buy that lot, but it's such a terrible lot that nobody can do anything with it. So she was trapped in paying taxes on it, knowing that she probably paid 15000 for that lot of them yesterday, years ago. And over the years, the town's assessed it. Uh, in 2014, it was assessed at uh, 32900 She was paying $809 taxes on that back land. So over the years, she's probably had 40000 into that land, which she couldn't do anything with. She approached me and wanted to know if I'd buy it from her, and she hadn't paid the taxes in a couple of years. So she basically just wanted me to buy it, pay the taxes off, which she owed like you know, $1,700, $1,800. Um, I ended up paying a $3,500 for it and just bought it from her. Now, I went down did a prep test on it just to see if I could do anything with it. And this land, over the years, the town is... Um, the zoning has changed where you need two acres of upland, which um, you, you can't have just two acres of uh, uh, two acres land. You have to have two acres of good land to build on nowadays. So both my lot and this lot are non-conforming because part of my back land is it's got some steep slopes. This one, this back land that she owned, has got a lot of steep slopes plus the swamp. So it's a pretty tough piece of land to do anything with. So if anybody knew anything about it, it would have been me. And what I, I had surveyors and engineers to try and see if I could cut off a piece of mine and put a piece over here um, so I'd make a buildable lot here. My wife and I were going to build a small retirement ranch um, if we could get it through all the planning board and zoning and everything. There was also issues with this land above this Class 6 road. And originally it said you had to bring this road up to town standards. Well. Nobody seemed to have any clarity on what what had to do with this road to get a permit to build on it. They, some people said you had to build a Class 5 road, go to town meeting, which would be next year. Some people said last year the selectmen had a meeting and adopted some guidelines saying that you could build 600 feet of road for a single residence, up to 600 feet long, and put one single residence. But they adopted those guidelines. But at that time, I was encouraged to say that maybe I could build a house there. But nobody seemed to give me any clarity on what I could do with this, 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 this road. Well, I had to make it a Class 5 road. And if you make it a Class 5 road, then you want the town to plow it because it's a town road, which the town doesn't want to do. So it, it's kind of a, up in the air what, what's going to happen with the road to get access to the, to the house. So we went to the zoning board three weeks ago, and we get denied. And basically, because of the non-conformity of both lots. I was making this lot more conforming, given it some good land. And, but mine had, had some steep slopes, made it non-conforming. So, and also my neighbor was complaining about the drainage. Drainage is actually no issue, because it all drains away from our land. But to, to fight with her over the lawyer, I'd have to get a hydrologist and engineers and lawyers, and they go thousands and thousands more dollars. <laughs> also, to get power down to here, I would probably, there used to be, like I say, telephone poles down here. But to put over that electric can, you'd have to cut all these trees on the side of the road. And nobody would like that, <laughs> to put overhead electric can. So to put uh, underground electric down here, public service would charge about $20,000. And I'd have to pay the excavators and underground pipe and stuff to get there another five or ten grand. Um, and then the issue would probably be getting an easement. Uh, I think there is an easement now with, with the, uh, as far as the telephone company, electric company, because they're at Old Town Road, but they were getting the after the way to, to figure it all out. And it just got to be such a mess that the wife and I decided we're going to give up. <laughs> so what we propose to do tonight is to eliminate this lot line and just combine the two lots together and eliminate the back lot, 7-3, and make all of this 7-4. So I'll have a four-acre lot 
That way, I'm not getting taxed as a host lot. I'm just getting taxed as back land. And I'll have a four acre lot with my house. Nobody can ever do anything with this land. Um, and it'll just be a four acre lot. And that's what I come in front of the planning board for tonight, just to see if they will uh, approve wiping out this lot line and making it one lot. I think uh, that, that's uh, basically all we're trying to do. This is all minus regular stone wall. It would make it a four acre lot. Okay. So. Thank you. Shall we? vote on the completeness of the application before we discuss? I'll make a motion to accept the application as complete. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I forgot it was just the three of us. Alrighty. Um, any questions or comments? But you're simply looking at eliminating the lot line as it exists on paper. You're not changing any, any nope. sort of, not clearing, not changing any nope. of the, I can't of the nope. vegetation, stone wall, nothing like that. No, nope. nothing. I won't touch it. I won't do anything out back there anymore. Yeah. But but just, 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 so, just so you're clear, though, Kevin, Phil has every right to right. take that stone wall away. He has every right to clear the line. Right. It's his it was just a question. Right? Yeah, yeah, sure. I just, yeah. don't, I just well, don't, I, don't, I don't have the intention yeah. of doing it and build on it. I just don't want him to agree to think that he can't. Nope. He has that religious <clears throat> right. both thoughts. Yeah. So, um, we would, so you still have this jagged edge there. Yeah, that was what the, what I'm going to get proposed. This is, right. so this is so, a lot as it exists. It's, 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 it's right. a lot. This is what Phil came in a couple months ago to us. Right, right. so we would need to have all that removed no, for the final no, plans? No, no. that no. never got this, approved. So this, this never got approved. It's just proposed. He, it's the, he has the voluntary oh, lottery. Right, form. there you go. He doesn't even need to provide this. Right. It's not I'm just required. trying to show you what we yeah. put on. Yes, yeah. got it. Thank you. Years ago, before the voluntary, before the lot merger statute came into being, mm -hmm. people had to prepare a plan like this showing the lot line to be eliminated. Then the, stat, the, the legislature uh, changed mm -hmm. the law and allowed you. To this seems a lot more efficient. Yeah, but, but in my understanding, as I've done a, a merger similar, um, that once you create this merger, you cannot then separate these lots no. over again. No, I'd have to go back to the plan of what they have and re divide it. And then on the form, right, so that, that no that way they would not exist as an option at this point. For the yeah. if, if I leave these two separate lots, I could possibly sell this lot to a builder of uh, some, some they get the deep, you know, with deeper pockets <clears> and <throat> let them fight it. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Um, and I don't want, you know, it just, it's it's such a terrible piece of lot. The only way it would have worked is if I took this land off of here. Nobody can really do anything with this lot. But going forward, I don't want to be paying $800 a year for, for a piece of wood so bad. Right. And if I eliminate this, it's back land. The town undergoing necessity of back land. And they shouldn't be taxed it as a house lot anymore because they proved it's not a house lot. Right. It doesn't well, exist as a buildable lot per it's guidelines as it stands now today. It, it, it's grandfathered, but it's really not a buildable lot. So, Standing alone, it can't be built on because <coughs> the only place you put a septic system is in this corner. And the rest of it steep slopes, you'd have to go back to the zoning board, which is going to deny you a building permit um, and a, and a variance um, because of the steep slopes. So it's really not a buildable lot. I want to get rid of it as a buildable lot. I just want to keep it as all woods and, and uh, one piece of land. Um, for what it's worth, and I can't say for certain, but I can't imagine that it would it would change its assessed value. It would it just has be. To. They because can, they it's can. still whatever the slope is. It's still whatever the wet is. Um, you know, it would if it were a back lot but it's undeveloped, it like if anything, it's becoming right. part of a house lot that is developed and developable, it would potentially you know, I, I don't know, I just don't wanna, you know, necessarily say back land in Rumble so it used to be worth fifteen hundred dollars an acre corner at Ed Jansen within the last five to six years. When when him and Paul Conley used to look at back land in town, that's how they assessed back land like this. Um, it, you know, undeveloped land that, that, that you know, if people had a big piece of land, they would assess the house lot and then the land up back, it, they'd assess it an extra 1500 an acre for the woods it, without, so, without it being a current use. So, I mean, current use is a lot less than that. 
that you have to have 10 acres. Of well, land. right. So that being said, mm -hmm. if if your um, desire to do this hinges mm -hmm. on its current and potential assessed value, you could I'll, potentially... I'll fight with the assessor, assessor on that. Once. Well, uh, well, but I don't want <laughs> I don't. you to like have done this and then mm -hmm. regret it because the assessed value is not what you thought it would be. Like, if, if it would be prudent to speak to the assessing firm before... No. Okay. No. I mean, because they, they, they're going to have to drop the assessment on it. They, they had it assessed at 30, 32900 for two acres of... of uh, because they were assessing well, it as a house lot. They're, they're going to do whatever they're going to do. Oh, yeah. Once you do oh, this, your only recourse is to file for an abatement. Well, I will. Yeah, okay. If I have to, yeah. Okay. But what I'm saying is now it'll be one house lot, and they're going to have to reassess it as one basic house lot. Yes. You know, they, they have to eliminate that as a separate house lot. Be one. So you are comfortable with the fact that we're not stating that right. we have any influence on how no, it's being an assessment yeah. of taxation. Yeah. No. You assume all responsibility for the right. third. Well, I already have with the block. Okay. Yeah. But there's no guarantee that oh, the no, taxation no. is going to change it. We're not, no, we're we're not trying to represent that at will. No, no I, I don't have expect to do it. Why say that that's another fight? I mean, it just gets to the point where you have to fight with everybody. Okay. <laughs> it just gets to the point where it's too expensive and yeah, too forward. So really, and you're right, it's just a, it's a voluntary merger. So it's right. Right. They're owned by the same, it's owned by the same party. Both yep. blocks. And to throw one other thing into the... I own a, some apartments in Elliott, and I bought a two-acre piece of land years ago in a town, and Elliott rezoned it so that you had to have four-acre piece of land to put a duplex on it. Well, I bought the piece next to it that was 15 acres, and I put a whole unit on it. Well, a couple of years later, I, I had two separate lots. Well, a couple of years later, they merged them back together again because what they did, they rezoned it and said you had to have four acres for a duplex, and I only had a two, and whereas it was, it was contiguous, they made it all one big piece of land now. New Hampshire doesn't have that statute anymore. These are both non-conforming. If you have one non-conforming lot and two conforming lot, you can make it all as one. Well, New Hampshire doesn't do that anymore, and that's, that's why I put both in the uh, same name, because I, I didn't have to worry about that. Um, but I learned years ago that <laughs> by now they, they've changed the statute where you uh, um, can have two separate lots, and even though they're non-conforming, they, they can stay as, as, as separate lots. Um, but that he hadn't hit him there with this, this issue. But um, right, it's your choice to merge them if you wish. That's, right. that's your right as owner of both parcels. Right. I just want to merge it so that it's just one piece of land. And if I ever do sell years from now, it'll be a one four acre land, piece of land instead of two acre. Piece. Sure. Um, but I just want to eliminate the law on it and uh, eliminate basically that law off the uh, off the town.
there a motion on the floor to accept the merger? I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I, I see planning board chair. Like one of you know, one of these looks more like an original than the other. I don't know how much that matters. Uh, I was more one of these being recorded. Like, are you, are you doing um, this? it's going to go through all the same process to my okay. mind. Okay, so you're going to record it. Well, somebody else in the office. Oh, uh, okay. The but town, yes, the, the town, town will do sorry, it. The town, yes. Yes. Well, you'll record. You'll incur the cost, but the town's going to record it. Okay. Because we've had, we had issues filled with yeah. people not recording stuff, so the new policy of this board is that we're going to record it. So it may not be recorded tomorrow. No, but back the next to couple. <laughs> no, they'll tell you what, it, it's only an eight by eleven. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I'm sure it's not more. You know, it's not yeah. going to be expensive to record. Just one. Yeah, I think we're good. All right. So. Um, if you hold on a second, I'll make a copy of this for you. Sure. We're still going to record it. But yep. Yep.
delegate to. Well, if you were to as, dele as delegate, it still could be the building inspector. Sure, right. Is that, so is have is that zoning? It is a zoning. It's building permits in the end. Under building permits. Do you know where? I would be good to have a copy. Let me check. Until a separate, you know, permit has been, um, all right, so we've got, in the first paragraph, it's the Board of Selectmen. Period. For a second period. And then in paragraph number three below, it says each permit by the Board of Selectmen. Yep. And I just think every reference to the Board of Selectmen in that sentence, in More that, in that section. Um, they're actually, I'm sorry, what? We're just going to change every reference to Board of Selectmen to Board of Selectmen or the designee. Yes. Yeah. Is that the only two places it appears? No. God, there no. are two in that, um, in that <laughs> first paragraph, and then there's another reference in paragraph mm -hmm. three underneath. And then the four is another one. I, I just think in, in section 13, you're going to say it's it's every the every, beginning of every, every paragraph. Right, board of select. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, it's everywhere. In section thirteen. <clears throat> Actually, it's in section thirteen one. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll see it too. Thank you. And then also in section. I don't like this, but it's what it is. Uh, Yeah, that's a similar situation. I don't, I don't, I suspect you don't follow this form. It says you need a special permit for you to get you, what does it say? Uh, occupancy and use of building if you're in the construction. Yeah, but that also is referenced to. Oh, yeah, to you, you have to apply for a certificate. Yeah, I don't think they probably have them like that here. I, I don't, and I don't know if the CEO was issued by the C, by the selectmen or. It, the, just like building permits, okay, is so, prepared so. by Tom and then approved by the board. So that's okay. No, because, because it would be nice to be able to sign it? if the board chooses to do that, okay. that would be better, yes. So section 13.1 and section 13.3? Yes. Those references will be changed to board of selectmen or the designee? Yes. Well, the board of selectmen is still going to be active in every facet of this, but is your goal just to sort of eliminate the workload of the board of selectmen? That's part of it. The other... The other idea, really, is that um, to some extent, you have a code enforcement officer, building inspector, you know, his many titles, because he has that professional experience and he's qualified to review the plans and approve them. So just like the select board is charged with assessing functions and welfare functions, they don't actually perform them specifically. They designate somebody right. else to do those things. But they so act on the advice of council. No. They, 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 they are ultimately responsible. Tom reviews but, them before right. we get but, them. But you they still issue them. Just them. Like they they, they it, still it, sign them. It's the only them. town in New Hampshire, in southern New Hampshire, was you go to the select board for, for a building. And it's really ridiculous. It's because cumbersome. It's very cumbersome for con you know homeowners, scheduled contractors, not realizing they need a building permit. happens all the time. Um, or contractors um, are surprised to find out we require a permit for nearly everything under the sun, and it <coughs> affects their scheduling. It's, it, and it shouldn't take a whole week. Is need because, I mean, granted, the select board wouldn't... Well, that's the thing. You, you would have to witness, trust them to... And, and that's, the onus falls on them, but they are the one of select. They're not going to appoint... 
Right. But what, is, what is Miles know about building permits? Right. About no, he's only going right. to act upon the advice but, 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 that I'm saying Miles is qualified. No. I mean, right. I, when I, I say he shouldn't be signed here because he, he's not qualified. When I was a selectman for years, we, I used to be this, the, the test pit witness for new septic systems. And I got fifty dollars, and I had to be paid cash every time I did it. On the Senate, I'd make a couple hundred bucks. And finally, I said to the board, the, 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 the town, "This is ridiculous. I know. I, I'm standing here saying, yeah, okay, uh -huh, yeah, yeah.' And, and there's still towns that do that. And we got rid of it. And we said, the, the person that's doing it has to sign the, the, and certify that they know what they're doing. That they have to be licensed. But we, we, we got out of it. And just, but like just, just also thinking about as the public perceives that. You know, in the wording being qualified designee versus just designee. I don't think. I think that. I think that. Would I that think be something that they would I, pick on feeling that that's I wrong word to well, put? What does that mean to be lax? Well, I don't. I, first of all, I, don't, I think the word qualified. I, 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 You're opening the door to what does that mean? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want anybody saying without well, defining it. Qualified, you know. I mean, it, and I don't think you should say certified because New Hampshire no, does a, have certifications, but to use. not all building right. inspectors are certified. So I think. I think that you have a, you have you have three members of a, you have your board of selectmen. Hopefully, that two of the three of them are going to act rationally and hire a code enforcement officer that's, that's qualified in some. Name. Or they'll do it themselves because that's going to be better. <laughs> no, because they're not. Like you know, he said, they're not qualified. Well, they're right. They're so, signed. so it's already like, like Tom, it's Tom, inherently Tom, 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 already Tom, 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 issued, Tom issued building permits in Dover his whole career. Oh. Here. He reviews them and brings it to his smile and says, can you please sign it? It's, it's kind of ridiculous. So I think it's a, I think it's a good change. Um, and then it should it say, as opposed to designee, should it say building inspector? What's that? Should it say building inspector, no, because code enforcement? What? But then that also puts the onus back on him when maybe there's a time that he's unavailable. Then the, then the board, it's just board segment or the, or the designee. So, so that at least is flexibility. Or the best way to put it. Right. Tom's on vacation for two weeks and the board feels comfortable issuing a building permit. It may appear at least yeah. bi less binding, but it is, it's the board selectman that assumes the responsibility to make a proper decision that someone is. Yeah. And remember, every building permit in New is, is appealable. Mm -hmm. So if you're agreed by the, you know, the issues of a building permit, you have to really appeal. So, okay. I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say it's, it would be, the zoning amount would be pretty simple in section 13.3 and whatever it was, 13. 13.1 and 13.3. Yep. Okay, so is it sufficient to write a Warren article, do you suppose, to just say, are you in favor of changing all references yeah. in section A yeah. and B to, when it says and then, this And then you can this. have the full text available at the, at the polling place, okay. which is going to be ridiculous because it's going to be three or four pages long. But if someone wants to read it, they can read it. But you are referencing specifically what portions or what sections. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and, you can, and then you can have a brief note what it means. That right, currently, the, you know, if you, you've seen the language. Currently, the building, the, 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 the board of selected issue building credits, this is going to authorize the building. The, the board is right. to authorize yeah. their some, somebody to do it. So yeah. Okay. Um, Simple bell. The other thought I had is a. I found a, a sample um, section of a zoning zoning ordinance. Um, I'm not sure where it was from. Um, I don't recall, but it, it limits the number of building permits that can be issued in a year per contractor and per, you know, per, it, it, as a percentage of overall building units or occupied units in the town. So, so that, you know, as it's written now, this sample language, it's something like 3%, and so, you know, it would still limit it to probably more than we would want to see in a year. Um, but I just want to discuss our um, vulnerability at potentially getting a really large development and a bunch of houses in really short order. So, uh, because you're new to the board, we had this discussion when Joe Pelzoni proposed to do a mega tri-city behind right, market Wendy, basket. Yeah, yeah. Mark, mark basket, yes. And after that fell apart for whatever reason, we, we the ended land. up buying the land. Um, the board hired Bruce Mayberry. We, we, there's two ways you can handle uh, growth. You can have a growth management ordinance, 
um, which says you can issue, you know, and sometimes we'll, we'll limit the number of building permits issued to a, so many of a calendar year. I can't stand them. I hate them. The other option is to have an impact for the ordinance to say we're not we're not prepared. We don't have fire safety recreation facilities for a uh, hundred more people. If that happened, we'd want more money. So we hired the planning uh, the board. You can see the board of selectmen of the planning board hired Bruce Mayberry, Mayberry, who's probably written every impact fee ordinance in the state. He lives in Maine, in Falmouth, Maine. He did a study for us. It was very good. And basically, he said, "You can't have an impact fee ordinance. This, we don't." But have we any. do have references to impact fees. We, we allow them. Yes. But we don't have them. We don't right. have any bond indebtedness. The school right. is not overpopulated. To you know, um, what's that? We have funds though. I don't know what your school pipe is. You're one now. Yeah. But you're bur you know, if you're busting at the seat. Well, well now, you're, now, you're, now, now you're really in trouble because you send your kids to another, you know, you're tuition your kids out of state. So uh, the only place you have, you could potentially have a problem is with the grant with the elementary school. Well, with, as far as school is yeah, concerned. Yeah, you got a fire, but police. We still have fire, police, yeah, you know. But there were some administrative factors, too, when you deal with Basically, what he so said was that the cost of administering, yeah. remember, basically, what he said was the cost of administering the, 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 that was the administrative was yes, going to outweigh the money yeah. brought in. I agree with that. Yeah. So, very specific. And then on, on the other money. side, you know, the, the town does have the ability, like every town in New Hampshire, to say, you can you can have a, you can have a, a, an interim, uh, a moratorium on growth. Now, where it doesn't help is when someone comes in with a three hundred lot subdivision. You can't stop that. Right. But let's say you get a twenty lot, then a thirty lot, then you say, "Whoa, we can't handle this. We better, we better stop. We better, we gotta." How do you do that? What is the mechanism for that? You gotta, you gotta, there's, if you read the statute, it's pretty. It, there's, a, there's a, there's a pretty simple method. You have a, you have a public hearing and you adopt a, you know, an interim. Uh, uh, for what, like a year? For like yeah, a specific I think it can only be for one year until you study the problem and figure out what you're gonna do. This is what I'll tell you though. I've been here a long time. I, I don't. I think that you have a very good zoning ordinance. Um, I don't. I really don't see another big development happening in this town. I mean, we we you know we have. But not everything is protected, though. Like some of the like you know hundred acre hundreds of acre you know. Some uh, you have a lot of you have a lot of land that people think is conservation land. It isn't. Right. It's that's what I'm speaking to. Now, right. and you know, or by families, there are a few families that own a lot of acreage that aren't in conservation. Um, right. And yeah, if mom and dad die and you know, the little kid says, I see dicey dollar signs, it could happen. Um, I don't know what to tell you. So what is your, what is your experience with growth ordinances that you don't like? Well, I don't, because I, I don't, I hate to see the, I hate to see any town manipulating growth. Uh, and, and Phil was, I, I work in Elliott, Maine. Phil was just talking about LA Maine. They had a growth ordinance for years. They issued 16 or 17 billing permits. York did the York Maine did the same thing for years and years and years. And they were manipulated. So what happened was, like in York, they would issue no more than I know, 70 new home permits in a calendar year. Well, during the recession, they were issuing 20 or 30. No one was building houses. When the economy's good, they were hoping you know, people were trying to build 120. So what was happening was. Uh, people would buy land, want to build a home. At one point in the, in the heyday, in, in like 2008, the waiting list in York, Maine, was 49 months to get a building permit. Is that fair? To make someone wait five years, you know, four years to get a, a, a permit? Um, then the economy crashed. People made, you know, had, had made investments, and then their land was worth half of what it was when they bought it because the town was manipulating the, okay. the growth. That's what I don't like about it. So I have to throw my two cents here, which is I, I like to uh, look at some of the language of the some growth statutes. I mean, I I, I, um, I think it's worth looking into, and I, I do understand your perspective, John. And I even think I heard through word of mouth you actually got one billing permit by staying all, all all night overnight, staying in front of the. I got many of them. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> I know you've got experience with yeah, that, but I, I, I yeah. would like to look at that issue. I sure. I do think that in the future. Uh, this town is going to be under really substantial development pressure, and I don't think we're prepared for it. I don't think we are. I know we're not. Right. So, uh, so, 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 what are we trying to? Are we trying to limit growth all at once, or growth in general? I think or? my personal concern is about 
a singular development that is of substantial quantity of individual dwelling units. Um, and, and my concern is not so much for the school, because I, I do think, yeah. that, you know, we, we can, I don't, you know, we'll see about when the time comes, but I don't, it, it's more about um, fire, police, roads, um, infrastructure, and also our capacity here to process building permits and inspect them. You know, I mean, that, that sounds really mundane, but even that, you know. Um, you can't deal with that. You can deal with fires, you can do public safety. Well, as far as impact fees right go, yeah. right. Yeah, but, but the, the town can't sit on their hands and say, like Rollinsford has, and I'm picking on you, and say, you, you know, you, we don't have any professional staff, we're open half hours. That's not the We're going to have to get with the program. Yeah, I, get, the program. I get that. And, 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 but, but I, so, so there's two approaches, as I said. One would be a growth management ordinance, or the other one would be to say, we don't have the infrastructure, um, we, we would, we would be, and if, you're gonna, if you don't think you have the adequate infrastructure, I would say impact fees might be the way to go. The thing I don't like about impact fees is if you look at a town like Dover, I think Dover, when you pull a building permit, I want to say the impact fees are in the $15,000 range, which, which, first of all, it's a real burden for somebody when they're building a home. But on the flip side, you have $15,000 to do. That's what I'm like. Even if you build, you know, you build 40 homes and you, and you brought in a couple hundred grand, it's not going to buy you a new fire truck. And no. it's, it, it, it maybe it's going to buy you a couple of police cruisers, but uh, you know, I, I don't, I, you know, unless you're issuing a crazy number of permits and, it, and it's a high fee, I don't think the fee is going to keep pace with. Well, the, the administration cost. alone and trying to keep track and of you justifying. Spend, and, oh, the, and the other problem is you got to spend it within, 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 I think, three years. Well, you have to justify it yeah. and you have to give it back and you have to purpose. keep yeah, right. track of so it. for specific yeah. things. Right. But you know, it, it, I, we, you hired Bruce Mayberry to do it once. It wouldn't be bad. You know, I bet you for cheap money, he'd probably come back and sort of review it. You know, I wouldn't mind a complete review, review, honestly, of the whole thing. I don't think Not the whole just, lot's changed. I mean, a complete review of the impact fees? No, I mean the whole zoning ordinance. That's just my personal opinion, without understanding the cost involved. Right. I've gone through, I mean, the board, the board's hired me to go through the ordinance in, in the past. I've gone through the site plan review regs. We can certainly go through it again. The, the biggest, what I will tell you is your zoning ordinance is pretty good. It, it, you know, you have, you don't have, you don't allow small lots. You don't have sewer and water. This, I mean, you have sewer and water down here, but there's no developable land. So that's not going to, you're not going to get density down here. The way we, you were going to, it was rather clever the way you were going to get density through behind Market Basket, and that was through some of it. That was where the infrastructure was coming from. That's now cut off. The approval for apartments behind Wendy's, uh, or Sh Wendy's, yeah, Wendy's, Wendy's yeah. Jaws, that's now gone. It, it's last. We changed the ordinance, so that can't happen. So we've cut off those two. Could it happen somewhere else? Maybe. I don't know where, but it could, I suppose. You know, I suppose you could poke sewer and water in from Dover somewhere near. I don't know. At their discretion, right? You know, so it, it's not—it's not a crazy thing to say that you're saying that you know that someone could do something of a large magnitude, and and they have every right to. Yeah. I just want to make sure that we are prepared for that and can deal with it. I, I I'm not looking to prevent it. I just yeah. want to be prepared, and that's—I think that's a good—that's a good goal. I don't think it's going to happen for March of 2019 in terms of zoning amendments. I think it, you know, but. I think if we want to look, go through the zoning ordinance and make sure it's accomplishing what we, what, what everybody wants it to accomplish, I think that's a good thing. I think that's just sort of a good. Pra I don't know a when goal. that was last done, so that's just I think a good practice to do while. every once in a while. Yeah. yeah, it's been a while. Um, but I didn't think that would happen for March. Yeah. But I'll I'll send um, since you want to look at it anyway, I'll send out. The sample ordinance. Yeah, I, no, I, I want to look at it. I'll, I uh, and I don't know if we can. I'll, I'll reach out to Bruce Mayberry and see if we can get that study because I don't. I don't think I have it anymore. I, and I'm sure Sarah, you put you was before your time. I think. Yeah. I remember being done. I remember when the stickers was the administrative costs. Right? Yeah. Because it's very specific what the money can be used for. It has to be justified. Yeah. That you, what you know, year? Reasons why you're charging this fee. Oh my God. I don't know. Who's Mike on the board? 
and then going down Main Street because they're all full. And there's businesses and, everywhere. And, right, and unfortunately, market. And we've we've reached out to the um, to the Pellerins and they're tapped out. They don't. No, I think they like the idea of redevelopment. I mean, it's a little to start, but it's not going to do much. Well, so what about, um, what about a TIF district? Or otherwise trying to partnership with developers over developing certain areas? You know, maybe there's a way to, if the Pellerans want to and don't have funds, you know, is there a way to... They have, the, they, have, they have the. Yeah. They have the. Yeah. I mean, they have enough acreage under under roof over there that they can create residential dwell, dwelling units. But we we talked to them not long ago, a couple of years, two years ago, and Brian said really in no uncertain terms that they just ran out of gas and they don't want to do it. Well, and I think a lot of the money was like the the fire. They, the fire they, spent, all the, they yeah. spent all the resources bringing the buildings up That's to fire code. Code. Yeah. And they just and they weren't interested. So. Uh, I, it, I guess I don't mean to say they weren't interested, but they don't have the wherewithal to pull it off. So um, that doesn't mean we couldn't invite them back in and see if we could do something. But that, I mean that that to me is where things can happen. Oh wait, who owns a softball field? It doesn't seem to be used anymore. Where? Next to the fire station. Yeah, the, no, next to the next to <coughs> on top of the water. I mean, they used to be very. Mm -hmm. That's heavily legion. used by sports teams, and I never see it used anymore. It's okay. legion property. It's legion property. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying. That. Like a little yeah. water water well, development well, site there. I mean, get some. Uh, that's space mining. It's being. I mean, I like the bucolic qualities of it down there, but it used to be softball all the time, and I haven't seen a single game this year. In fact, in the last couple of years, walking down there, have you seen those things, Kevin? We used to get beer league definitely there, you know, every Saturday or every Sunday, but I haven't seen it in a few years. It's been very quiet down there. I like your idea of getting some kind of help, though, around the question. Because I don't think the answer really lies in this board. And certainly well, and I don't think we're going to, we're, we're not going to drum up the interest. I mean, when, we, when we had the master plan in public hearings, we might have had one person. It, it, no one was that excited yeah. about it, you know. Right. It just so maybe like a plan New Hampshire shred, you might be able to get people out. I don't know. I mean, it'd be worth a try. Um, I mean, I was involved with one of Littleton, New Hampshire, probably six years ago, and we had a hundred or so people out in Littleton. But Littleton's a, it's a little bit different. You know, they're you know they're trying to grow. They're you know they're really interested in trying to figure out their identity. So it'd be worth a, a try. We had that one meeting that Nancy Carmer came to. She was talking about. Um, potential development ideas because she works from Portsmouth, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. yeah. well, she works do you remember that? Again, yeah, do you remember that meeting? Mm -hmm. well, I don't. I don't remember. So I remember she came, but yeah. I don't remember specifics. So. And there was the other, the one other guy who kind of lives over in that area too. Um, I can't the the there. No, there was another resident who actually was like. Yes, I'm interested in talking about like potential development in the town. I'm going to come to this meeting okay. and, and provide info, which is, you know. It's, it seems to me that the only development that we've gotten of late has been, I've been largely been CJ. And the problem is, it's, it's, and I'm, this is not, a, I'm not trying to put them down, but the tax value of those buildings is probably negligible. So it's, you know, what you really want is, you know, medical research facilities or, you know, right aids or, you know, those, those things really, really have high tax value. But, uh, but those that, places like Route 4. They like that that's right. Of, that's right. They like traffic. Route 4. They want yeah. that traffic and that exposure. Yeah. I know, I know. I'm not, I'm, you, you, yeah. We all know it's a, it's a sure. sure battle to try to rezone 4. You know, it's got a bit. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a natural um, connection between South Berwick, you know, downtown South Berwick, has come alive. You have the mill. I mean, it's kind of a natural progression. You got Fogarty's to, if you could revitalize it down, I don't know if it's possible to get higher end restaurants. So, there's no offense to the restaurants that are there or businesses, but. Um. But the thing is, John, you, it's funny that you, I bet you if you ask 10 people in Dover how to get to downtown Ronsworth, they have no idea. They have no idea. 
right. There's no reason to come here. But, but that's right. I mean, they're going from South Park. No one knows what they'd like to know. Where does that go? And it's sort of, you're like, mm, where, is that? But then I'm, where do I go here? It's not, people don't know where downtown Rawlsford is. They live 10 miles away. But a lot of the population likes to keep it that, that small secret. They like it to be a quaint little town. Like, well, know, then, that's in the woods that no one knows about. They don't like the taxes. They don't like the taxes. That's a catch-22. Oh, I know. I know. I hear you. Yeah. But then you also look at some of these studies, there's, there's a cost involved for that. And, you know, it's not well, the charrettes are not, um, they are free. No, 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 what Kevin is saying is that there's a, there's a cost of commercial development. I think no, there's a cost of some of these studies and some of these... Oh, so if we were to hire an expert, yes, that would cost money. If we're going to hire a plan in Hampshire and, and do a charrette, those are free of charge, except we have to provide meals. And if um, they typically involve a, an overnight, in which case whatever experts they provide need to be housed by residents. We have to find places for them to be. But that's well, really we'll, it. We'll hotel, hotel yeah, it's not a yeah. 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 extra room. But theoretically, there's no other cost <laughs> to doing that, which alone makes it really attractive. But I think, I think it would take something like a plan in New Hampshire charrette to, to get to drum up interest. I think if this board tried to do it, I don't we would I agree. We would we did not present. Agreed. Okay, so, um... How do you engage um, you just, I'll find out. Yeah, it's just... Um, well, I don't know if they have... They only do, I think, two a year. Yeah, they, they don't do a lot so of years, so there may be a waiting list, and, but you know... It's, it might not happen this year, but maybe, or, I mean, in 2019, but maybe we get in in 2020. I don't know. I think, pretty sure they do two a year. So just, just for uh, theoretical discussion, if we rezone the area from Taylor Rental up to, on Oak Street, the idea is someone comes in and buys all those properties and knocks everything down, and that assumes everyone is willing to sell. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Or, or over time. Over I mean, time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the houses are become a grandfathered use, but very much like the industrial zone along Somersworth Road, yep. which is mostly houses. Mm -hmm. uh, I, think, I think they're allowed. I don't think they're grandfathered. I think, they're, I think residential is allowed. They are allowed. They're yeah, allowed. you're right. Yeah, they're you're allowed. right. They're allowed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're allowed. Um, but, you know, the other thing that would do is, I, I can't remember, I know that I know John might on the board, but the people who, next to the tracks, they try to get a variance to do storage, right? self-storage, which mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to weigh in on whether or not self-storage is a good thing, but it, it certainly would have been would not have been a high tax generator. But they were denied. Right. Um, but then, the, you know, the, the other question you have to ask yourself, if, if you were one of those property owners that's been there, I know there's a couple of homes that have been there a long, long time. Would you want to live there now? I mean, well, the there's a new here. one. There's a building permit in process for mm -hmm. one of those tiny, non-conforming lots along the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. So that's the one so that yeah. they've got the... They've got the, the well, the, and I don't know if you know this, but some of the properties up the road um, are for sale, and they're they're marketing them as like potentially like eight and nine lot subdivisions. Which way is it? What road? Along Oak Street. Yeah, the 60s. Yeah. So um, you know the black and white house. She has the black and white awning. She has a lot of land behind her. She's a, and it comes down in in back of like a bunch of the neighboring properties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think that is. Yeah. My Um, I mean, whether it's cheap, whether it's cheap. But I mean, well, how would that impact if, if somebody started developing that? Uh, yeah. I mean, no, I, mean uh, I don't think, I don't think, that, I personally, we've been talking about, or I've been talking about Oak Street with this board for three or four years, three years, four years. I don't think it's, I don't think you're ready to do it this year. So it's not, I, I don't think it's going to happen. There was a lot of, there was a lot of a butter turnout for that <laughs> ZBA hearing. And all of it centered around traffic, the impacts of commercial traffic. I mean, I travel that road probably five times a day. It's so scary. I don't scary. know what storage would have done. I don't think it would have affected it at all. I mean, that traffic is brutal already. They were worried about trucks traveling out. Could I mean, be. even Andy, Andy Pottery, Andy, came out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
theoretically, I mean, it would be more volume, but if you put, like, a plaza or something that's, like, set back from the road with a few businesses in it, mm -hmm. you could put a light and have more controlled traffic on that road, commercially. I think, I think that probably is that bridge. Yeah, bridge. Well, right, it's, it's right close to it. Yeah. You don't have a lot of room for error. Well, right, and it's red-listed, so. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is the plan to address it? Or I know that we're kind of waiting. It's a state. It's it's a it's a state bridge. Oh. It's not our bridge. It's um it's on our list because it's half ours, but it doesn't belong to us. I don't know. Cause they replaced the board about this big about two weeks. Ago. Yeah, because it was a big chunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just ridiculous that we have like wood plank board bridges on such a major road. Yeah. Like, it is quaint. Okay. Um, you had mentioned a glass meeting and as one of these topics, accessory dwelling. Yeah, accessory dwelling. Oh, yes, yeah, so we have to get our ADU um, language up to date yeah. because it's not compliant. So do we want to allow them attached or detached? Um, either way, do you care? I would say that we keep it as much the same as possible. We have to change our square footage. Yeah. Um, and we have to allow them in all districts. Yep. Yeah. But otherwise, I mean, and that's as far as I was going to go with it. Good. But, you know. So we did just have to change the, the definitions? Or where they're allowed on the side? Yeah, there's. Um, we just want to make sure we hit it in all the spots, though. Yep. Yeah. Um, did we do. Um, is the special exemption under um, C1 fixed in both places? <coughs> yeah. Is that still a problem or was that rectified? I don't think it was. I don't think it was rectified either. So we need to fix that too. Uh, that so. doesn't need to go there. I'm talking about how um, Bloom went through his process and still needed oh, special right, right, right. exemption. Yes. Yes. Oh. No, that needs to be corrected. Sarah, where, where is that? Um, that was under special exceptions. Um, I think it's, um, so is it on the table of uses? No, it was... Um, John, are we um, okay, not... So, sorry. Well, I was just wondering, are we non-compliant about ADUs in any other way besides square no, footage and... No, 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 no. Okay, so Section 8, Special Provisions, was where we had the issue with... Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, Lewin? Um, like the master oh. document. 
It's right above ADU. Yeah, I see it here. Yeah, okay. It says buildings containing multiple dwelling units should contain no more than six dwelling units per building. Yes. Thank you. So is that something we want to delete? Well, do we... Um, Can we modify it to just be zone specific? Does that make sense? No, I don't. Well, yeah, I don't where else are you going to get, you know? Um, I don't know what the intent was because it's been there forever. <clears throat> talking about allowing develop residential development in the mill in the mills, we were going to control the density by select the site plan review regulations that had available parking, blah blah blah. Uh, we didn't we, we just we didn't care about density uh, per building. So I don't I don't know where that came from, but it's been, obviously been there forever. So is there um so if somebody comes with a proposal for eight, they don't necessarily have a right to eight if they don't show all the other requirements, such as parking and right. Correct. Yeah, it's square footage. footage. Right. So I, well, yeah. square footage, is there, what is the, um, I mean, there are lot size requirements for multiple dwellings, but. I would say that in, in large part, no one's going to build anything. No, I don't think this is going to be, I, I, I would be shocked if anybody built a well, new building. And it also says building um, buildings containing four or more dwelling units must be connected to sewer and water. Right, so it's downtown. So, right, yeah. which already limits. You're going to have a large building if you're talking well, about Well, that's not true. Well, I mean, it, well, they could have poked it in from some first. They could have poked it in from Dover. Well, that's true, right. Um, but um, I think those, those have been, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I suspect that this is. I, I believe the, the the that this is most of these conversions are going to happen down here. Yeah. This is what got them into trouble. Yep. Yeah. Section ten. I mean, what control the balloon now was space. I mean, he just didn't have. Maybe he ran out of park. I mean, he did do the best he could with what he had yeah. to work with. Yeah. He made a great attempt. Yep. Okay. So I guess we just need, I mean, if we're going to have, if we're going to track stuff, I mean, that's something that we ought to consider either modifying or deleting. Is there a feeling of the board about one versus the other? I didn't bring a copy of the book. I feel like I need to read it. I mean, I, I, I think... I How would you modify it? What would you change for wording if you wanted to modify yeah, it? I, don't mean I, would, it. I would delete it. I was thinking striking myself. Yeah, I was striking. I, I think with the rest of these conditions, this one doesn't make sense. Um, because... Yeah, there's, you a to, there's a lot to fit in. It's kind of a nine. Yeah. unit building. you got <coughs> 120 parking spaces. Right, so... I think I'm fine going all the rest of the board on that. I mean, I'm not going to really have to do it. Can I bring up a bad topic? Always. Oh, shared, shared driveway subdivisions? No. Do we, no? Okay. No, no, really. If there's something we need to address about it. I just, you know, I mean, it, it was it was something that was, you know, obviously near and dear to Dave Island. It took them three or four years to get approved. It was, it was, I mean, it was written for him. I don't think, I don't like it. I've never liked it. I don't know if it's, you know, I think. Delete every, it and allow it to be grandfathered where it is. It's, his is done. It's approved. Uh, but we, Well, there's another know, one. Is there another one? Oh, um, Gagnon Hill. Road. Oh, right, yes. So there's two. I, I think, you know what, we had a, 
you know, we got, you want to look at those and say, are those accomplishing what we want them to accomplish? I don't if they think are, so, because they don't meet road standards. So I think, to my mind, they're a fire hazard. Or we're setting up, you know, a homeowner liability, you know, unknown liabilities for them. That, that's my concern about them. I'm also concerned that there's a perception that they are private roads, which is different because that's what the street sign says, which is not the same as a shared driveway, and that's for E911 purposes. But I'm afraid that somebody's going to, you know, the institutional memory, should it change around here, which is easy to have happen. Well, there's, there's, there's a recorded document that says that it's, it's never going to be a town road, but times can change. You know, well, in right. Years, so people can say, "Well, let's, we can modify that." So, uh, I never, I don't think most of the board members ever liked that or that ordinance when it when it got adopted. Maybe you know, it might be worth just looking at it. I'd be fine to get rid of it. Yeah. Well, if grandfather was there. I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other. I think it complicates things. And what exactly does it say? What page is it? So it's fifty-seven. It's that well, the amended one. It's road front standards. It's right under the. So you might have fifty-seven for us. No, I forget. <laughs> yeah, it's fifty-five for you. shared driveways or if we change other regulations such that people aren't just automatically required to pave, yeah. then that bodes better for us theoretically in the future. Well, if you have narrow roads, it bodes better for you. Well, right. Then that's going to happen with your fire department. So it happens right. with fire departments everywhere, but not here. But very so you don't so usually have people that are willing to step up and pony up the money for pavement. It's a significant cost. Most people try to get away with it as minimal as possible, and that, that leaves you less, you know, pervious surface. So it, it kind of takes care sense. of itself a little bit in that sense. No one's ever argued that they want to put down more pavement. They want to uh, use gravel. I mean, even the most recent uh, Pepin thing, people didn't want to pave parking spaces. I mean, when, when it was last proposed to the town, some of the changes to this, I, I feel that the it was the impression of the planning board that it wasn't going to go through when it went to town meeting and it, you know, some changes did take place. So the public kind of spoke on that behalf. And I know it had some strong supporters with it, and I know Mr. Nowlin was... Well, and it was on the ballot for, it was on the warrant articles for a couple of years. To make some modifications. So you to read that to finally get it through. Yep. And then there was an attempt to repeal that fit. Is, is that I think that's the worst part, yeah. The, the board suggested the repeal, yeah, right. if I remember right. Yeah. Do you remember any of that? And, and it failed. I, I, I remember discussion 
This is going back a few years. Yeah. I just think it's, you know, again, it's, it's, it wasn't, this is not to slight Dave. It was, you know, because Dave worked hard. You know, he had something, in, 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 he, he had something worked out in his mind for his own property. It's just so unique. I mean, you know, like the one section in here. Uh, the shared, the tra shared, drug, the shared portion of the drug shall not exceed a half mile in length. I mean, we have a lot I mean, of it's, weird, so it's almost yeah. impossible to have another project saying, fit so neatly into well, right, these guidelines, this right, exactly. template. It, 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 it but, almost excludes the majority anyway. Right. Which, which to me would be to say, just delete it. I mean, if it's been used once or twice, I, what's the likelihood of ever using it? It was, it's, it's a, it was a royal, royal pain in the neck. But oh, why delete it if, if the impression is that it would have to be a perfect scenario to have anyone even plug into it again? Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, maybe you're right. If you don't think it's ever going to be used again, leave it there. See what happens. Well, but if we really don't want it, though, let's remove it. Why, why would you keep it if you don't? Because really well, then use sometimes the, this, the, the feeling that you put out there is that, you know, the town is so anti anyone developing anything and moving forward and trying to you know, make their investment pay off a little bit more. So you think, well, but are you capacity. creating a false perception, though, about, as you say, this, you know, very specific template that is not... It's not, it's not, a, right, it would have to fit in there perfectly, it'd have to be a perfect overlay template, but, but it, it's not impossible. As opposed to saying, no, we're not going to, we don't want to do that anymore, and, and then having someone that decides, like Dave, to you know, put on his, his boots and, and, and fight for it again. I think we need to think about it and bring it up again in the future. I mean, maybe next session I, I something yeah, I haven't really, really thought about. Yeah, I mean, yeah. one way or the other. I also yeah. think the number of um, articles that are on the ballot, like if, if this is the fourth or fifth thing, if, if the stuff really, um, And my advice always is to not constantly toy with it in order. Unless it's causing a problem, it, as Kevin says, maybe, maybe you let it, let it go. Because I, I don't think people want to see five or six amendments every single All year. All these little tweaks. And yeah. Um, change this wording, change that. Uh, my word. feeling, though, is that, you know, I've sort of got mixed feelings. If it's not going to be used, we don't like it, I would like to see it go. But if we have two or three other things that are more important, then maybe you go with those. I threw okay, it out there. So I threw it out there because I've never liked it. I didn't like it from day one. The board struggled with it horribly for many, many years. Okay, but to that point, we already have. Select board or designate. Yep. Um, and we have um, ADUs and the um, Section 8 special provisions. So we have three. Maybe that's enough. Do we really want to entertain anything else on the ballot? The only thing that I have brought up before um, is, and again, the language in front of me, but the, there's that new uh, statute that passed that said that you can put a limit on how, how long an unutilized site oh, plan testing. can, and I think that's. All due respect, more important than the shared driveway issue. I, I think I'm worried about how many site plans this board grants that <coughs> aren't used, and then suddenly we don't even know what how many are lurking out there. So I, I think that's a more important issue. But, but if there's been no zoning changes or any changes that specifically change the criteria under which that project was approved, you know, if, if it fit under the plans as they sit, and nothing changes five years from now or two years from now. To require a re-review when nothing has changed other than perhaps maybe a butter's you know, ownership. I mean, I think what I worry about is the, the, the institutional memory of the board. I mean, we don't even have, a, we're not even organized. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you were to ask me what site plans would be approved three years ago, I think I'd struggle. But also falling back on that perception of the public in that, okay, I, I did my due diligence, I did all of my research, had all my engineers, I got this plan through. And now because, you know, I didn't choose to act on it within a certain time period, um, I, have to, I have to resubmit. Here's what I say to that. I, 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 as, you, as you all know, I do both. I, I'm, I'm a planning consultant and I'm also a developer. And I will tell you that the cost of developing land is so expensive today that there's very, very few people that would go through the process and not pull the trigger. But I think John is right. Our... Uh, maybe lack of organization here. If somebody gets a, a project approved and in three or four years, but let's say the economy falls apart and they and they wait and we we change and, and and then they want to build it, 
probably no one could remember what was important to us if it wasn't you know, accurately reflected in the plan around this. So, and it doesn't say that if, if, there, if there's a five year recession, they can't come back to the board and say, hey, the economy's in the toilet, we really would like an extension. That, there's nothing wrong with but that. Is it really fair to that developer that's, because of other things, let's say the, the price of steel, you know, that he decided to put a project off, and because we are somewhat lackadaisical in our in our bookkeeping, in our record keeping, is it really fair to that developer to have to resubmit and incur additional no, costs? I would say no. If the zoning changes, change that happen. I mean, do you want it to be a, do you, I mean, do you want it to be good for twenty years? I mean, at some point, you got to say, hey, you know. Oh, I agree with the timely limit. Yeah, I, I'm just. I'm just I, all but right. if you're going to put it out five years, then it's already all forgotten anyways. All I'm saying is that. There's no, I don't. I don't think if someone from Manchester is is uh, uh, getting a Cumberland Farms approved and they have to come back in two years to ask for an extension because some for some reason the economy went to heck, they couldn't figure something out on their end. I don't think that's unreasonable. They can do it by letter. That's not the person. Right, right, and I agree. The guy that's doing the Cumberland to Farms, re re he's already got his funds in place, all his financing. It's it's a done deal. He's you know he's breaking ground the day after the approval, but that's not every person trying to develop something. So is it fair that the, the little guy trying to do a project versus the big guy trying to do a project, you're going to hold them both to the same standards? Well, we're talking we're not standards. Standards. years here. We're, we're yeah. So, Kevin, what do you think is fair for a, ton, for a term? I mean, is it, if there's been no changes in zoning, there's nothing that has changed that would make that plan not fit under the way it was approved. Well, Does so, there needs to be a time limit. I mean, I think I think there is, but I, to, to impose one, I don't know if that's fair. <clears throat> You're saying just because the board has changed personnel, or you know, time has lapsed and our memory is not being as such, um, that that person has to resubmit and incur whatever cost, or well, just his time alone. Well, so what if it's you know, forgetting institutional memory and all that? What if you have a half-paved road and you know, a foundation? You know, at like what point do you have something that's unsightly or a hazard or something that is, you know? But then other thing would come into play. I mean, there's like safety and sort of well, safety, safety over our foundation. I mean, you know, other but issues. and I know there was an example you're coming up with, but someone that goes to the point that they're already going that far, chances are they're they're proceeding with a project. They're not going to piecemeal it. They've they've got anything lined up and they're going to see it to to the end. But I'm saying if there's no changes to zoning, there's nothing that's changed that would make any aspect of that project not approvable. Why so let me, let me throw this idea. So, so on Clement, Clement Road, so, you know, Claude got permission for that project, right? And he's actually started doing something. But let's say, you know, down the road someone comes in before us and they ask for a similar subdivision. And it's approved. There's no time limit. And we forget about it. And then someone else comes in sometime later and says they want to do it. And, and, and you know, and you're, you're, you're considering the, the second new subdivision having forgotten about the impact to the neighborhood of the other one. I don't, I don't know how it... But is that the problem of that premier, of that initial developer? No. That's that, the only thing that falls on us. I, mean, I think we so have remember, to, to people that are... First of, first of all, I think that, we'll, we'll say Claude is a small guy. Mm -hmm. He's still a developer. He, this is how he makes his living. This is how I make my living. Sorry. So it's not unreasonable for him to say, you know, to, to put constraints on him. If he ran a convenience store, he'd be constrained by certain regulations. I, I don't think it's an unreasonable thing to say. Well, what sort of time limit are you anticipating? What do you thinking? see out there? For I think, I think four years is fine. It's, it's more than enough. I mean, if you don't act in four years... And, and, and you know, if in, if in three if in three years and eight months you decide you can't pull it off, come back to the board and ask for an extension. The board may say, yeah, no. If there's been no zoning changes, it'll take five minutes. But I think John's right. I mean, but then if you're going to go that far, there ought to be some degree or or, or benchmarks that someone has to hit. Let's say that they do clear a small path. Okay, now they've, well, that, they've that, begun that, the project. That's what, that's well but settled. now do they have that's an open well window? We, we don't need to worry about that. That's well settled in New Hampshire court in New Hampshire, by, New, by case law. If they if they if they if they've done substantial improvement as defined by the courts, it's vested. You can't do anything about it. What like what Claude's done from no, putting I don't the, think, I don't, the road. I don't, I don't think that's the best thing. I, I, I 
don't know what he's done. I mean, I, I've got a subdivision I'm dealing with right now in another town that's five years old. They, they paved the road. 18 lots, they put one house in. I'm arguing that it's not vested. With a house on it? One house and 18 lots and a binder course, binder course of pavement. And you don't think it's vested? No. No. 18 lots and one house? So, 18 <laughs> lots and one house, the road, in a, a, a road. In a so road he, that was The guy's, paid. you know, a million dollars into it, and he hasn't, you don't think he's begun the project yet? Oh, he's begun. I don't think it's vested. Now, I'm just saying that this is an example of where I don't think it's vested. That a court may disagree with me. But, you know, you just can't go in and grub out a road, throw in a foundation, and say, I'm vested for, for, for perpetuity. That doesn't fly. The, at some point, a court is going to say, yeah, you've done enough. You're vested. I mean, there was, a, there was a huge case years and years ago. If you guys know Meredith Bay and Winnipesaukee, somebody was going to build a hotel there. They put in a half million dollar foundation for a hotel. The economy in the 80s collapsed. That foundation sat there for three or four years. They went to build the hotel. The town said, no, you can't build it. They sued the town, went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, you're not vested. Really? Yeah. So, you know, a lot of it's case by case. But, you know, I would say that, you know, again, Claude building one house and maybe roughing in the road, that's not vested. If he, if he pays and puts two houses in, eh, maybe that is, you know? Yeah, but I think proportionately, and you're looking at one house is on, a, on an 18 house subdivision versus putting the road in on just a five lot subdivision is, is a, a road, different a road ratio. Road five lot, yeah, that could, that could be it. But it's know? not really even a road, it's just, it's yeah. just the, you know, the gravel court, it's the under, yeah. it's the foundation of a road. And, and we don't have to worry about that because no zoning, the zoning hasn't changed, the, no, nothing in the zoning would, would prevent it. Exactly, from doing nothing that. in the zoning has changed. But, I, but I, I, I do think that the idea of, I mean, just having an open-ended approval is foolish. Miles, you haven't really weighed in or heard to Len. What do you think? That was, that's exactly where I was I'd like, I'd like to, I mean, we know where Kevin and John stand. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could really go either way. I mean, I, I see the, the arguments on, on both sides. Um, I, I guess I'd want to hear, like, what are the advantages of having the best thing so that you can allow? I mean, obviously the ownership hasn't changed, so you're not allowed. <coughs> well, ownership has nothing to do with it. So, I mean, you can sell. Yep. But, so that's, that's, that's off. That has no bearing. It, it's, it's what's been done or what hasn't been done and how long the approval is good for. But what, what's the advantage to having a, a, a vesting schedule? Or to I wouldn't call it a vesting schedule. I'd, I'd call it a, uh, maybe a start schedule. I mean, vesting is different. Once, they, once, they, once they've completed enough of the site work to be vested, then, it's good for, then, they're, then they're protected forever. So how how long of a period from the approval to vesting do, do they do they get from this from mm -hmm. this board? That's the question. But what's the benefit? And your question well, is what's the benefit? Oh, you're you're Miles is speaking. I, 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 no, no, I, that's that's the question. I think Miles laid out. Or I mean, John laid out what's the, what the benefit was. You know, we approve other things. We do. We, you know, things change. We forget things. Um, I just, you know, you had approvals laying out there in no man's land for years. I don't know. I, don't. I, I do worry a little bit about um, how we would enforce this. Since we couldn't, you know, do, do we have things lingering out there? You know, I think anything approved now has to be changed. No, right, we just be applied prospectively, not retroactively. <coughs> right. Yeah. Essentially, it would be on this body or the administration of the town to notice or remember that something got approved and notice that it is not much done and um, that's an interesting question whether I suppose the planning board would um, I suppose send a letter and, and let them know that it doesn't appear as though your project is vested according to our regulations and just notify them. I mean, I think, you know, because we, we have the benefit of living in a small town, we're all yes. residents, and we all, you know, somebody would have to say, hey, why don't we check on when that project was approved? I don't know. You know? I mean, in all my years here, I don't know of any cases that ever happened. I, I don't know of any project that was ever approved that wasn't active, that it didn't get built um, in a time minute. But I could be, I, you know, I could be missing something. Mm -hmm. um, the longer you allow it to go before requiring vesting, um, I think makes it less enforceable because we're gonna not remember when it was approved, and right. you know, 
Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not on the zoning board. I'm, I've been yeah. on the zoning board in my town for many years, and when we, when we grant variances, we all, I, we always put restrict. We always say that this variance is only good for a year and a half, or two years, or whatever the circumstances are. And if it's not acted on, then it's null and void. And the reason is that if you grant someone a variance and you, their neighbors sell, they, they, they you know, might create new abundance or something, and we don't want something being acted on that someone wasn't aware of. So we always put time limits on. Once the, the variance is, once it's acted on, then it's obviously good forever. It's a so is that plan. something that you would say you put on, you know, have on a plan? Is that sure. you must be yeah, tested yeah, we by? A, we approve a site plan and it says, you know, um, the, the uh, you know, uh, unless act, active and substantial complete, uh, uh, completion of the, of the project is set, uh, active and substantial completion of the project has to start within four years of the date of the uh, approval, of the, the, approval. The, the date of the approval of this plan. How are you feeling about this? I mean, I don't see a big reason that it can't be said that from here on, when you come in front of the board and you get this done, that it's added in somewhere that within four years you've got to make a obligation to finish this or come back and ask for an extension. I mean, I don't think that asking for an extension is too far out of the realm, but, you know, just that when, when they do the plan and we say, okay, the plan is good, we're saying that according to subdivision regulations and everything, you've got four years and ask for an extension within six months of four years and, you know, or whatever at the four-year date. Um, I mean, it's arbitrary number, but I mean, I understand. I just want that number stuff. Else, uh, you know, it could be two years. It could be, you know, whatever. So when I saw myself the homework of looking at Growth Management Ordinance language is also myself homework of making some calls about vesting, <coughs> especially when, and coming back to the next meeting with information on both. Right. Thank you. Also about um, when when you do that, um, I'm I'm interested in what um, I kind of feel like four years is a long time, and I think two or three. Sure, but that'd be part of it too. Yeah. Is, is to see what, yeah. what other towns find is a reasonable time frame. You must know what other towns. Four is standard. Four. Is it? Yeah. But no. Well, let's do the top five though. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so that's four potential changes. So we may want to avoid the shared driveway issue because that doesn't include the shared driveway issue. Vesting. That does not include the shared driveway. The verbiage on the designee and um, the special exemption on um, number ten. Yeah, special exemptions. So that's three. If we do driveway, uh, that's four. If we do driveways, that would be five. So um, we're SB2 now, where every single thing is going to be in the voting booth. So um, we might have some voter fatigue. I don't know if that's a real term. But, but you know, well, it's always been voted on the voting mm -hmm. booth. Right, I know. But, um, but and so it should be at least like close to the top. You'll have a longer ballot. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a lot longer ballot now. Yeah, um, yeah I think, I, think yeah, I, I agree with Kevin that we try to deal with the shared driveways later. It's not, I don't think it's an issue. And we didn't have, by the way, anything on the ballot last year. We didn't, we didn't get a collective act together. So yeah. I don't think it's unreasonable last of orders to think about four things this year. We asked yeah. about zero last year. But the SB2 is a new thing. <clears throat> this year. So, yes. Thing. So, is everybody okay with not addressing shared driveways until the following year? Okay, we'll do that then. All right. Um, so this is October. Um, so at the November meeting, let's plan to set public hearing dates. Okay. I will look into what the statutory requirements are about it has to fall within. If it's on uh, any website. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I have it. I just need to reference yeah. it. So our next scheduled meeting is November 6th, which I would recommend that we don't meet that day right. since it's election day. It, it is election day. Elections are not going to be held here, but. Um, we, of course, want to make sure that all of you and, and any of our applicants and attendees would have the opportunity to vote, so. Um. Yeah, I mean, it would be, the, we would meet as the polls close, but I'm expected to be there to. So that'd be
makes Every already a very long night for you. Every day is 12. Right, is that right? Yeah. So we're going to be... Can you do it on a night not this We could do a Wednesday. Well, although we're getting into budget season, so, you know, Wednesday night's budget committee meeting, so we're going to conflict with them if we go to a Wednesday. But the 13th would be... Did you say there's something on the 12th? My phone tells me that the 11th and 12th is Veterans Day. Oh, well, we would meet the 13th anyway. Yeah, so oh, Tuesday, okay. yeah, we could do Tuesday the 13th. Okay. I'm good with that. We're all good with that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. I think, I like Glenn's idea, by the way, and I think Glenn articulated it, having a sign, if it's going to be, it's going to be a good turn, I think, for voting, have a sign about volunteers at the, at the vote. Well, yeah. so we have to be really careful about that, because there really are rules about you can't have, um, distraction. Yeah, you, you have to, there are lots of rules about what you can hang up on election day. What about just a table with a flyer on it? That should be fine. Um, I would say, why don't you bring that up to the select okay. board? Because the select board, in conjunction with the town clerk, run elections. And maybe you and the town clerk together can, I mean you as the collective body of the select board, can talk to the town clerk, um, perhaps even Monday the 15th when she's coming in to talk to you about her budget. Yep. Um, you can talk about election day and tables. Yeah, but have to any money for flyers. Well, maybe it's just a poster or a handmade poster with volunteer opportunities, you know, playing or whatever the maybe a lot of slots available, you know. And we can take a couple people. You know, it wouldn't be bad well, to have you all the best. Um, yeah. Pa Patrick, as you know, is on long long term leave and I, I don't know if he's coming back. I no insight whatsoever. Um, but yeah, just, there, there should be something we can do on election day since we'll see lots of people, and if nothing else, we can talk to the people we see there. Because I'm sure and that's really what I think you'll be the most action because I mean, no one's ever beaten down our doors to come to the place. No, the library, no one cares. I try to talk them up. My problem is that, like, my fears, like. I talk to parents like who have kids my my kid age, my kids age. They're all like, "Well, I have soccer." I have this. I mean, they're so wrapped up in their kids like ten million sports that they don't have any time. Or like the colleagues are already on stuff. Yeah, the people who can already yeah. do stuff. Well, you know who's the greatest? The Kavanaugh stuff. <laughs> they're having a. Yeah. They're not really happy with the town. No. <clears throat> no. It's a whole other um, Nonetheless, if they want to let that rest and at some time in the future want to consider it, you know, yeah. I still think I would just talk to her today. They're actually pretty chill about it. Yeah, and he might. Yeah. So, if you see them. Yeah, and like the other people that I try to talk up are people who are retired. Because, you know, that's. A lot of people have, they have a lot more time. Um, yeah. <coughs> I don't know. People just don't see. I don't. I don't think that people understand like how much of an impact they can have on the development of their town, right. being on the planning board. And it's for most of you, it's very little work. It's, I mean, you have really your consultant. You you know you kind of know certain things. If you don't, you ask questions. I mean. Carolyn and I do pretty much all the heavy lifting of the applications and all that crap, so, I mean, it's, it's, really, yeah. um, it's not that much of a commitment. It's like two hours a month. So, that's the hard thing. I think set. the heavy lift for people is getting acclimated to the topic and feeling intimidated by, um, you know, having no idea what it's about. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thinking you need to know construction standards or uh, something like that. It's a, it was a learning experience. Yeah, yes. we can change our name. <laughs> well, it could be. Well, I think it's more accurate to call it like the land use board or land use management board. I don't know. Wait, if they could just if they would just come and see, it's yeah, just gonna come and see. You know, it's they never come back. No, it's it's you know. Video, having to watch the video for the meeting for the minutes is very compelling. <laughs> <laughs> I just been here. I kept rewinding it. Why do you? It's not really. It's not really.
restrictive, short of don't eat a sandwich, you know, at the table. I mean, it's pretty easy. Right? They don't yeah. Really All right. So we'll do what we can about um, talking to people. You might let's table the minutes um, until next. Because yes, we'll I need to get that merger information. Merger information. information or that waiver information. Anybody have any other business? No. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.